Good day, everyone. My name is Raihan Khan, and I'm a software engineer at FSCode. So today, uh, in this talk, I am going to uh, describe uh, about Kafka, Apache Kafka, how to provision Apache Kafka on Kubernetes in a TLS secure way using uh, QDB. So this is our table of contents uh, about what we are going to talk about today. At first, we are going to uh, describe a little bit about Apache Kafka, what it is, how does it works. Then we're going to move to uh, Kafka and Kubernetes and talk a little bit about Azuki Balas Kafka. Then we're going to show you some common Kafka clustering techniques that you can do using QDB. Uh, finally, we're going to go through a demo, a short demo, and show you how to uh, secure your Kafka cluster using TLS. And finally, we're going to finish up with, uh, with announcing some upcoming features and going through a, a Q&A session. So the question that first arrives is, what is Kafka? Uh, Apache Kafka, or commonly known as Kafka, uh, is the one of the most uh, popular open source distributed streaming platforms. And it is used for building real-time data pipelines uh, for streaming apps. It is a highly scalable, fault-tolerant, and high-throughput platform that enables the collection, storage, and processing of streaming data. So Kafka is basically built on a distributed architecture where the data is stored in a fault-tolerant and distributed manner across the cluster of machines. This allows for horizontal scalability, high availability, and high throughput. One of the key features of Kafka is its ability to handle high velocity, high volume, and high variety of data streams. So in this talk, I would like to uh, focus Kafka in care of mode, basically, uh, which is a new way to run Kafka on, on Kubernetes. Care of mode basically uh, actually eliminates the need for Kafka uh, to use a separate Zookeeper cluster, which is traditionally used for maintaining the configuration and the state of the Kafka cluster. So this is what Kafka uh, used to look like uh, on a plane diagram uh, earlier. Kafka traditionally uh, used Zookeeper uh, for its management. So Kafka control plane was managed through an external con consensus uh, service, which is called Zookeeper. One broker is designated as the controller and the controller is responsible for communicating with Zookeeper and the other brokers in the cluster. The metadata for the cluster persisted in the Zookeeper and Zookeeper is uh, used to orchestrate the whole uh, clustering in Kafka cluster. Okay, but later Kafka came up with a new protocol, a new mechanism, which is called KRAP or Kafka. So this is how the Kafka cluster looks like now. So, history, uh, so starting from Kafka version 3.3.0, the Kafka control plane will be based on a new internal production ready feature, which is called KRAP or Kafka RAP. The dependency on Zookeeper will be eliminated. Now you can see in KRAP, a subset of brokers are designated as controllers. And these controllers provide the consensus services that used to be provided by Zookeeper earlier. All cluster metadata will be stored in Kafka topics and managed internally instead of uh, being stored in Zookeeper. So in KRAF mode, the Kafka cluster can run in a dedicated or shared mode. In a dedicated mode, uh, mode some nodes will have their process roles configuration set to be controller only, and the rest of the nodes will be set their process roles to be broker only. Uh, but uh, that configuration depends on uh, you and the size of your cluster. And for share node, some of node will have process roles to the uh, controller and broker both. And these nodes will do basically uh, double duty. Uh, which way to go will depend on the size of your cluster and your configuration again. So the brokers that serve the controllers in a KRF mode cluster are listed on the controller.coram.voters configuration property that is set on each of the brokers. This allows all of the brokers to communicate with the controllers. One of these controllers brokers will be active controller and this active controller will handle communicating changes to metadata with all of the other brokers. Now, all the controller brokers 
maintain an in-memory metadata cache that is kept up to date so that any controller can take over as the active controller if required. This is one of the features of KRAF that make it so much efficient and um, than the Zookeeper based controller plane. So this is how KRAF works in Kafka. Okay, so let's see some of the advantages of Kafka in KRAF mode and uh, see why you should use Zookeeper less Kafka instead of um, uh, you know, with Kafka, KRAF mode instead of just uh, having a Zookeeper uh, dependency on it. Okay. So there are many advantages to the new KRF mode, but we'll discuss a few of them here. Like the first one that comes into mind is simpler deployment and administration. By having only a single application to install and manage, Kafka now has a, has a much smaller operational footprint, which also makes it easier to take advantage of Kafka in smaller devices at the edge. One of the main benefits of Zookeeper's Kafka is its simplicity. Zookeeper is a centralized service that is used for maintaining configuration and state in Kafka cluster. It is responsible for maintaining the metadata about the Kafka topics and partitions. And it also coordinates the leader election for partitions. However, Zookeeper is a separate service that needs to be deployed, configured, and managed separately, which adds complexity to a Kafka deployment. The next one that we can say is improved scalability. So the recovery time, what is recovery time? Recovery time is an order of magnitude that is faster with KRAP than with Zookeeper. It allows us to efficiently scale to millions of partitions in a single Kafka cluster. With Zookeeper, the effective limit was just tens of thousands only. So more efficient metadata propagation is another reason why you should use Kafka in KRAP mode like log-based, event-driven metadata propagation results in improved performance for many of Kafka's core functionalities. So Kafka modes provide several benefits over traditional Kafka deployments, uh, like it eliminates the need for a separate Zookeeper cluster, which reduces the operational complexity and the cost of running Kafka cluster. It also simplifies the scaling and management of Kafka cluster. Another important aspect of KRAF is its ability to run Kafka on Kubernetes. Kubernetes is a powerful and flexible platform for container orchestration. It provides a uh, built-in feature such as automatic scaling, self-filling, and automatic rolling updates. When running Kafka on Kubernetes, these features can be leveraged to provide a highly available, scalable, and fault-tolerant Kafka cluster. Additionally, KRAF mode is an open source project, which means it is free to use and can be easily customized to meet the specific needs of your organization. So let's come to what KubeDB can offer you. Now, KubeDB have recently added support for Apache Kafka, starting from version 3.3.0 in KRAF mode only. Uh, KubeDB now is going to provide support for Zookeeper as the Zookeeper as uh, Kafka have announced that they are going to make Zookeeper dependent Kafka deprecated uh, several versions later, and they are going to drop Zookeeper dependency by version uh, 4.0. So uh, we have plans, we currently we are supporting version 3.3.0 only, and we have plans to add uh, more versions and upcoming releases. So when you install KubeDB uh, on your Kubernetes, KubeDB is going to install some custom resource definitions there. And one of those custom resource definitions, it will deploy a custom resource definition for Kafka. Using that Kafka custom resource definition, you can deploy a Kafka CR or Kafka custom resource on your Kubernetes. The Kubernetes deployed provisioner operator is going to watch that Kafka CR and uh, as soon as uh, and reflect all the changes in that CR to your Kubernetes. Now it is going to uh, create some stateful sets, services, certificates, secrets, app bindings, uh, PDB, and persistent volume claims, persistent volumes uh, for your Kafka as required. Uh, you don't need to uh, deploy those workloads separately by hand. Now, and finally, if you want to delete your resource, you can uh, try two types of options. One is do not terminate and other one is wipeout. The wipeout uh, termination policy can be set for testing purposes and development purposes only. 
it is recommended that you use do not terminate on your production cluster as it can uh, restrict your cluster from accidental deletion. So this is it. Now let's go to how can you perform Kafka clustering. So as we have discussed earlier, Kafka uh, have two types of clustering uh, method, uh, method, uh, methodologies now in uh, KF mode. One is combined clustering and the other one is topology cluster. Now in combined cluster, uh, each of the nodes will have both of controller and broker process role uh, in their configuration. They will act as both controller and both broker. That means they will perform double duty. Now, you can deploy a standalone Kafka cluster on my node, uh, which is just a single node that you can deploy in your cluster. Now, what is a standalone Kafka cluster? Let's see how, how can you deploy it. You can deploy it with a simple YML uh, with a QPP with the Kafka custom definition. That is this that you can see here. Uh, like any other custom issues definition on Kubernetes, it has an API version, which is in this case kubedb.com, like v1 alpha 2. The kind should be Kafka. In a metadata section, you have to provide the name and namespace uh, for your Kafka cluster. The name of your Kafka cluster here, you can name it to Kafka standalone or something else. And you can provide the namespace. I have given it to demo here, just for example. And uh, spec section of this custom resource definition, you have to provide the version that which you want to deploy. Currently supported version is 3.3.0 that I have said earlier. Uh, you can set uh, enable SSL to true if you want to secure your cluster with TLS. Enable SSL at your uh, enable TLS at your SSL layer. In the spec TLS section, you have to provide the issuer ref. The issuer ref will be uh, a issuer for you. Uh, which will be used to inject the certificates into the cluster. Okay. And you can provide the replicas as for a standalone cluster. I have given here the replicas to be one. Uh, you can use a standalone cluster for, uh, like, say, for testing purpose only. It is not recommended to use such kind of cluster in production. And the storage section, you have to provide the storage, uh, storage properties. Like, I have requested one gigs of storage and provide the storage class, uh, storage class lamp uh, as per your cluster, as per your environment. Okay. So this is a multi-node common Kafka cluster YML. Here you can see all the uh, specs are almost same. Just I am, deploy, I am going to deploy it with a, a different name maybe. In the same name space, uh, I have provided uh, more than one replicas here. And there is one more spec that you can see here that is disable security. Uh, it is uh, set to false by default. That means if you uh, comment out this line or comment out this spec here, disable security, uh, then what will happen is your cluster will be deployed with SASL plain text uh, mechanism security. Now, if you are uh, uh, if you if you know about Kafka, you should know that Kafka have uh, many security mechanisms. One of them is a SSL SSL, and the other one is SSL uh, plain text. Both of them are supported by uh, KubeDB. There are other security mechanisms which are not currently supported. Now, if you comment out this line, this is our security to two. Uh, what will it, it will do is it is going to uh, use to deploy a Kafka cluster using SSL plain text mechanism. That is a simple uh, username password uh, authentication for your Kafka cluster. Now, here you can see that uh, the other specs are almost same. Now, I'm going to jump into demo and deploy this Kafka cluster into my local kind. Okay, so let's jump into my cluster is here okay as you can see i am using uh, kubernetes client version 1.25.1 and my local kind uh, kind cluster is on version uh, server version is 1.24.6 i have already installed kubedb you can see that uh, it's in 
QDB namespace there. All the QDB ports are running. This is the provisional operator port, which is running here. Now, if you want to install QDB, what you can do is you can go to QDB.com and follow the instructions there. Okay. Now, I have QDB installed in my CAN cluster. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, deploy the cluster. The combined cluster here. I have created the Kafka resource. This Kafka combine has been created, as you can see. It has created some Kafka ports, Kafka combine node ports. It has created the service and the configuration secret. Now let us wait some moment until all of the ports are ready. And here, as you can see, our Kafka cluster is getting ready. It's currently in provisioning status. That means all the workloads are getting ready or the workloads are getting deployed into the cluster. Okay, let's wait for a while until this status gets ready. So what QDB does is QDB provision operator watches the Kafka resource until it becomes uh, ready and how it determines is it is gonna uh, it, it is just a continuously running health checker inside the Kafka cluster. Uh, the health checker does what the health checker does is it checks uh, the it continuously and concurrently checks the Kafka cluster until it is ready. It checks uh, whether it checks for Kafka health, uh, whether you can create a Kafka topic, you can uh, produce uh, some data into that topic, etc. Now until that, the Kafka node is, is case provisioning state. So let's wait until the Kafka becomes ready. It might take a while. Okay, so while it's getting ready, we can do something else. That is, we can check out the YML for Kafka. You can use the shorthand KF for Kafka. And our Kafka resource is Kafka Combine. Let's see the YML. Okay. So this is a Kafka cluster, as you can see here. So here is the health checker field. Uh, if it, it is configurable, uh, if you want to configure these fields like failure threshold, pure seconds and time out seconds, like uh, you can also set this how many times, uh, what is the period of health checking that you want to set, you can do that. If you want to set the timeout uh, for health checking, uh, you can also set that in this field. So you can also, there is also another field, uh, disable health checker. Uh, you can also use that for disabling health checker if you want to. Okay, so Kafka have set some default memory limits and request. It is also configurable in this spec.pot template section. It has three replicas. And in the status section, you can uh, check the status of your cluster, like here database have successfully provisioned, all replicas are ready, database is accepting connection uh, connection request, but our database is not uh, ready to be uh, for read access. Here, you can see the status is false. So let's wait until it becomes true or ready. 
So as you can see, our Kafka combined cluster is ready now. So now we can exec into our cluster and perform some required operations. Okay. So as our Kafka cluster is ready, we are going to exec into one of the Kafka ports using kubectl exec commands. Okay. Yeah, we're going to exec into Kafka combine zero. Okay. Now we are into this call. Now what we have to do is we have to let's move towards home. And from there we're going to move to config directory. And we list out all the config files here. We can see Kafka have lots of properties files uh, which are used for Kafka configuration here. Okay. Now what we're going to use is we're going to uh, use Kafka shells uh, to describe the Kafka metadata column status, Kafka metadata replication status, create a Kafka topic and um, publish some data into it using the Kafka console producer and then subscribe to those data or consume those data using a Kafka console producer, Kafka, Kafka console uh, consumer. So let's start. Okay. So at first we have to set a bootstrap server. So as a bootstrap server, you can use all the servers that are used for uh, Kafka communications. So I'm using this. I'm using the uh, FKDVN for or Kafka. Here you can see Kafka have created a service which is named Kafka Combine Ports. This port is a headless service. As you can see, it has cluster IP set to none. This headless service is pointing to all of these Kafka ports. Okay, so I'm going to use the uh, FKDVN for this Kafka port and this port 9092. Okay, so I'm using this environment variable server to export this bootstrap server address. Okay, I have exported this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Kafka metadata shell here. Okay. This is the Kafka metadata column shell, and I'm going to pass the bootstrap server flag to this server address. And I'm going to add the describe command to show the status of metadata. Here you can see the cluster ID. The leader ID is one. That means uh, uh, the the port that has been assigned to ID one is the leader now. So what happens is Kafka, uh, Kafka assigns a unique ID to each of the uh, Kafka ports. So what um, the the ID the ID assignment is uh, done sequentially. Like here, the Kafka combined zero. This is assigned to uh, one uh, to zero to ID zero, the Kafka combined one, this port is assigned to, to, to ID one, and Kafka combined two, this port is assigned to uh, ID two. Okay, so here it is, leader ID is one. Leader repo, high watermark, max follow lab, max follow like if you know Kafka, these are all the uh, Kafka terms that you can see. Current voters, I mean, within the uh, one, zero, one, two, that means, this one zero one and two all of those three are participating in voting in to select the leader uh for kafka controller uh, so all of them are acting as controllers now current observers there are no observers not here as all of them are controller okay so this is the part where you can see the kafka metadata status now from there we're going to show you the replication part, okay. We're using the same shell again, and you can see that the node ID one is assigned as leader that it was said earlier. The leader ID is one here, and here you can see that uh, for each of the node ID, the log end offset and last base time uh, time in stem and last caught up time in stem. This is uh, present here. You can see that here with this command. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a Kafka topic using the Kafka topic shell. 
uh, with the create flux and we're going to name the topic to be test uh, for now as it is just a demo uh, with three partitions and and the replication factor of one and the plus the bootstrap uh, server api with the bootstrap server flag yeah let's create the topic okay so i have created the topic test now if you want to see if it has been created successfully okay you can describe the topic here it is these are the topic informations the topic name is test as for the it has created three partitions zero one and two as for the partition zero the leader is one as for the partition one the leader is two as for the partition two the leader is zero as you know that we can only read and write into Kafka partitions from the leader class from the leader node only and Kafka partition zero uh, it has replicas one partition two it has replicas to uh, node id two and the Kafka partition two it has a replica in node id uh, uh, in the port that has a node id zero and these are the in sync replicas that means which stage replicas are in sync with the cluster okay so this is our Kafka topic that we have created. Now we're going to uh, create a Kafka producer and a Kafka uh, consumer from the, using the Kafka console producer and the Kafka console consumer. So we're going to use these two separate terminals here for one is for producing and one is for consuming data. So let's exit into the same port. We are going to use bash. Okay, let's go to home. Okay. If you don't uh, shift the directory, that will be all right. That will be no problem. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I have to export the server IP again. There it is. I'm using the same uh, bootstrap server IP. There. Now, from there, I'm going to start the Kafka console producer for the topic test. That means I'm going to produce some random data into this topic. And I've set this flag request required acknowledgements to all. That means I need acknowledgement from all of the in sync replicas that our data has been received or that has been produced. Okay, so I've started my producer here. I'm going to play some random data. I produce some random data here, and on the other terminal, I'm going to create a Kafka console. Uh, I'm going to produce a Kafka console consumer. Okay, let's exit into the port in the shell. I'm going to export the bootstrap server. And here, I'm going to use the Kafka console consumer. Okay. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. Uh, I'm producing, I'm producing the data into Kafka combined node zero. That means into partition zero and for it, the leader is one. So if I want to consume the data, I have to exit into this one. Okay, so let's do that. Let's exit from this port. Okay. Export the rest of server. Start the Kafka console consumer. Okay, I guess we have to exit into the other one here. Not this. I have made a mistake here.
sometimes it takes a little time because of Kafka uh, leader election. Okay, we're going to trigger the Kafka leader election again with the Kafka leader election shell for all topic partitions. Let's try that. Okay, now we're going to see your Kafka topics again. Here it is. Okay, just keep checking to Kafka command zero. Export the server there and start the Kafka console consumers. Let's exit into the Kafka combine node one. Let's start from the leader relation again. You see why it's not coming. Okay. Now let's try from Kappa command node 2. I guess there was some problem. Let's start it from again. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this topic. Fill this topic test. Okay, so I have deleted it. Now let's create the topic again. Okay, now uh, we're going to start it again. Start the producer. Okay. Let me start the consumer node here. Here it is. Yeah. So it seems that there was some problem earlier. Now, this is an Kafka console consumer, and this is an Kafka uh, simply console producer. If we produce some data here, like some random numbers, you can see that on this consumer. Here, the data are being generated, consumed by the topic Kafka from the beginning. Here. And all of this is happening in real time. 
So this is how you can use uh, Kafka cluster to create a uh, publisher and subscriber platform as per your requirements in using a Kafka common cluster. So this is it here. Okay, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to exit both of these consumer and producers. Clean these terminals. And what we're going to do is, we're going to I have a publisher which is uh, deployed using basically a Golan. I have implemented a Golan publisher which is going to produce some data into the topic demo here. So I'm going to apply this deployment and check whether the data is being produced or not. Okay. So let's start again. Let's apply the deployment. First, let's take out of this port. Sorry. Let's apply the publisher deployment. It's going to create a publisher producer port here. Okay, we're going to show the logs of this producer. Okay, the producer has been started. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to exit into the Kappa combine node zero again with bash. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to export the Buddhist server first. There it is. Now, I'm going to, I think there was some problem as you can see. So I'm going to uh, delete the existing topic demo. To start from fresh. Okay. Now, as you can see, I have deleted the demo and a new topic demo has been created again and it is generating some uh, random data, some random events, and it is publishing these events to Kafka. You see it is generating some random event and some random numbers here with the key data and value random event something, random event, a random number like that. So let's exit into the Kafka code here. Okay. Now I start the consumer. Let's see if it is being consumed by this port or not. Thank you, Pete. Topic demo of the console consumer. Okay. Looks like the bootstrap server was not exported. Let's export the bootstrap server and apply the same command again. Okay, so it's not in here. So we're going to exit into the other port. Before that, I'm going to describe this topic, demo. Okay, if I describe this topic demo, then the leader is two. So let's exit into Kafka combine node two. Okay, here I am. I'm going to export the bootstrap server again. Okay, I've exported it here and start the console consumer for topic demo.
Okay, and this is not coming here. So let's exit into the other port. I'll combine one to the same there and export. Combine ports. Then we're going to start the console consumer. Okay, I guess my consumer console command was a little wrong there. I'm interrupting a bit. Uh, 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 do do Kafka has some sort of log uh, so that we can find uh, what's going on? Uh, no, Kafka it's stored in the Kafka log. Uh, that's not the issue. Uh, sometimes what happens is Kafka leader election is a little delayed. Uh, so at that time it becomes tough for the Kafka to consume. Okay. Uh, could it, could it try to uh, uh, retry the process again? Uh, the the uh, yeah, I think that's what I should do. Okay, I'm going to delete this topic again and start generating the data. Okay, I have deleted uh, the topic demo, and I'm starting to producing the events again. Okay. Set me to combine not zero. Export the server and start the console consumer again. Okay. Let's Exact into Kafka combine not one. Export the server. And start the console consumer. This break into a combine of two and export that of a server and start the config here. There it is, as you can see. Uh, it is generating the events here. It is consuming the events here. We are producing some random events uh, from our Golang producer that we have uh, from the producer part that we have created, uh, that we have uh, implemented using Golang. And it is being consumed by Kafka that you can see in the Kafka console producer. And it is happening in real time. Okay, so that's how you can use external uh, publisher or, or consumer in the same way if you want to interact with Kafka. If you want to publish something into Kafka or if you want to uh, subscribe or consume some event data from Kafka. So this is it. So let's go back to, to our slide. So another one. The last clustering method that you can use is Kafka topology cluster. So this is in Kafka topology cluster sample YML here that you can see like any other Kubernetes customization subset. It has an API version which is kpv.com slash view another two. The kind is Kafka. In the metadata section, the name is Kafka topology. Uh, I'm going to deploy it into demo name space. Version is equal to uh, this zero. Uh, if you enable SSL to true, you have to provide the TLS here. 
uh, TLS is, uh, in the TLS, you have to provide the name of the issuer ref and its kind and which API group it belongs to. Now, at QDB, uh, if you want to uh, use TLS, if you want to secure the cluster at TLS, you have to uh, deploy SART Manager prior to deploying this YML. Uh, because SART Manager is going to uh, annotate this issuer using a CSATM uh, CA. Uh, which is going, uh, this is your, uh, going to inject the necessary certificates using the SAT manager into your Kafka cluster. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Okay. Okay. So let's see how we can do it. Okay, so I think I can stop this producer and clear my terminals again. Okay, exit out of these ports and here. And I'm going to deploy the topology cluster. I already have installed SAT manager. Uh, I do want to see them. Still get. See the, in the SAT manager namespace, you can see the SAT manager for the running. Uh, you can deploy this using this command. Uh, which will deploy directly the SAT manager YML. Uh, it is all the necessary YMLs required uh, to deploy these ports. Uh, there are other ways to deploy SAT manager uh, in your cluster. If you want to know them, uh, this is SAT manager uh, official documentation. I have already deployed them as you can see. So I don't need to install them again. Okay, so what I can do it, I can directly apply the topology Kafka into my cluster. So here it is, I have created it. And as you can see, the cluster have started provisioning. You can see in the, the Kafka topology custom resource and its started, uh, status is provisioning. That means all of the workloads are being provisioned. You can see that the uh, here. The pods are being created. Okay, let's see what are the other resources that it has created. As you can see, it has created a configuration object, one for the broker config and the other one for the controller config. Because as you can see here, I have provided in the spec section two separate sections. One is for and the topology section, one is for broker and other one is for controller. In the broker section, I have provided three replicas. That means it will deploy three replicas for de uh, dedicated broker nodes and three replicas for dedicated controller nodes. Each of them have sp uh, their separate specifications that will be used to deploy uh, dedicated broker nodes and controller nodes. So here it is, it has created a separate configuration secret for the brokers separate configuration secret for the controllers. It has created a key store credential secret. It has created an administration credential secret that will be used for SSL uh, communication, that means for authentication. And uh, it has created two services, two headless services, if I say. Uh, one is for the broker ports and the other one is for controller ports separately. We are going to use this broker ports as our bootstrap server if we want to uh, access into the cluster. Okay, our cluster is in provisioning. As you can see, the broker and controllers are container creating status, the ports. So let's wait for a while until they become ready. Eventually they'll become ready. Until they're becoming ready, let's watch their uh,
Lionel, Demon and Exodus. Here it is. As you can see, it also have the same uh, health checker field, which is configurable. It has an auth secret field, the secret which that we have shown you earlier created by Dr. Provision Operator. Uh, this secret is going to use for administration uh, authentication. The key store credential secret here. Uh, this key store is going to be used for uh, encrypted, in, encrypting the certificates. And in the port template section, you can uh, you can customize it as you like. I have provided this first step to durable. Uh, if you want, if you, you can set it to ephemeral. You can configure it to ephemeral. If you don't, if you want your uh, uh, PVCs to be PV, uh, persistent volumes to be deleted when you delete this resource, and permission policy to be deleted. Okay. The TLS section, you can see that the operator have created uh, some uh, certificates like Kafka topology server cert, Kafka topology client cert. All of these certificates are created for uh, uh, author. Uh, for authorization purpose to communicate in SSL, uh, S uh, SSL, SSL mechanism. And here is the issue of text needed for TLS. Okay. So let's wait until all of the sports are ready. I think we can delete the combine node now as we don't have any work for them. Yeah, you can see I'm deleting the Kafka combine node. And let's wait for some moment until the Kafka broker nodes are ready. See, there's debt here. Okay. okay, it's going to be ready in a while, but I think there was some mistake by me. Uh, the ops manager operator was not done. So this will be eventually get ready if we have installed the ops manager. Okay. So let's get back to our slide. So that's it for today. Uh, I'm going to show you some of our upcoming features that we are going to uh, provide in our uh, next releases. Uh, like we are going to provide support for custom configurations, provide support for monitoring with points from ETS and Kafka. We're going to add support for QDB box request for automating day two operations by QDB. And we're going to let our support add support for push controller UI and support for Kafka Connect plugins as well. Okay, so that's it. That's it for today. That's how you can provision uh, Kafka cluster uh, in using KeepDB. So let's move into Q&A session. If we have any question, please. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Raka. Uh, it was yeah. uh, it was a good pre my presentation, and uh, all the effort you have done uh, with the presentation. Uh, but uh, uh, here is some questions from, from my side. Uh, yeah. One of the thing is uh, actually what uh, uh, what 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 you're thinking. What might be happen when the data was not uh, streaming? Uh, okay. Do, do you there think there's a configuration issues. issue or? Yeah, there was some. Uh, no, the configuration was okay. There was some networking issue. I can see. Uh, so the, that uh, that 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 didn't happen regularly. 
Okay. So it can cause some some uh, networking issue. If you deploy Kafka on any cloud, it uh, shouldn't be happening. Uh, okay, so from our side, I think uh, we should uh, 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 recheck uh, these things and uh, and uh, and the the other thing for the topology cluster, I have seen the uh, secret was not created by the office manager, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, we like do have the to... manager wasn't ready here. Okay, so we do have to install. Uh, do you only have installed the QDB uh, uh, provisional, right? Yeah. Um, okay, uh, thank you. I guess it was missed out, <laughs> but uh, if you want to provision Kafka uh, using, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you have to install the provision uh, operator, provision docs manager operator, you have to deploy the SAC manager and then deploy the provisional, uh, deploy the topology YML and it will eventually create the topology cluster. Okay, thank you. Okay. I guess there are no questions. So Nazmul, you can take over from here. Uh, thank you, Rehan. Uh, so with this, we are concluding the webinar. Thank you all for your lively participation. We hope to see you again next time. Our upcoming webinars are already scheduled on our website. Visit appscode.com slash webinar to register. Have a nice day.